ओम शांति In our retreat today, Sister Rajini has specially kept this topic on the Ramayana and Mahabharat or the Gita. Actually, I would say that Ramayana, the whole story, is a Brahmin life. because in india it is mentioned about that there are three rams not one ram one ram is of silver age the second ram which baba always indicates towards the supreme that's why he says ram raj and ravan raj against ravan the five vices the one who liberates us is also known as the supreme ram but the third ram is the soul and ramayana means ayan means the journey the journey of ram the journey of the ram of silver age was different there was no vice is nothing but actually the ramayana story is about the journey of the soul ram in this confluence age and the various test papers that we have to cross in our brahmin life how those test papers come in front of us and sometimes as baba always says it's a boxing between maya and or ravan and the soul so the different types of test papers so which are the test papers that we have to cross in our journey the spiritual journey so it is shown that in the life of ram from childhood as he grew up he did his schooling and after the schooling he was taken by a great sage that he would like to kill some of the demons so he wants the support of ram So similarly when baba the supreme ram also comes he has this that he wants the support of us souls ram he want to be uh, he wants us to be his very good helpers so as to demolish the evils from this world so a yagya is performed and it is shown that how the demons they used to throw unhealthy things in the yagya in the sacrificial fire and were trying to make it impure so that is when the sage takes the support of ram so similarly when shiv baba comes and establishes the yagya in order to keep this yagya free from obstacles and free from all other various evil um, things going on so baba also takes the help so help of us ram and the first test paper that we have to pass as shown in ramayana the first test paper is of everything is going on very well and then after the yagya is established and everything is already nice so they think of the coronation of ram and his father thinks my son should be on the gaddi so when that was to take place it is said there was a maid in the palace who did not want her um, who did not want ram to 
have the coronation. So it is said that she poisons the mind of one of the queens and says, why don't you allow your son to be seated on the throne and you send uh, Ram on an exile for 14 years. So this was the gossip and this is how it poisoned the mind. So in Brahmin life also, the first test paper that comes, we are very good, excited, intoxicated, uh, leading a very beautiful life. And then the things come up. When we are able to see some things happening, some of the souls, we see that their face, although they are previous to us, but they are not feeling happy. So then the test paper of gossip starts. So the first test paper in any Brahmin life is of gossip. Gossip. And if we are able to overcome this test paper, then we are again in our intoxicated stage. But most of the time we feel that yes, everyone needs some place where they can at least share something. And so we participate in whatever they have to say, take interest in whatever they have to say. And this is how when those gossips start influencing our minds and our thoughts, that is from where the test papers start. We are very much intoxicated. We are very good in our stage and everything. Sometimes we go to Madhuvan. And we are all in one room. Here we are all in our different places. So we don't know any, anything about anyone. But then when we have to share a room, that is when the gossip also begins. And hardly we understand that this is a gossip. So from there, the story takes a turn in Brahmin life also. So we have to be very careful then it is said as the turn takes place in Brahmin life, we also start looking at things. What is happening? What is going on? Is it like this? Our vision, it was so pure and elevated in the initial stage, starts changing. And then the second test paper is shown of desires and attractions which is shown in the form of another devil lady who comes and she is trying to influence the tension of Ram and Lakshmana. But they are able to disfigure her also. Her name is Suparnaka. So after that, when the U-turn takes place in our life also, the exile starts. And in that exile, there are many other test papers that come. So I would always say that one is Maya and one is known as Ravan. Hmm. Ravan does not come immediately. Ravan does not take entry immediately. But before Ravan takes the entry, it is shown the females, which is known as Maya. So in our lives also, it is Maya, small, small test papers like gossip, then attraction, desire. These all are the test papers which are termed as Maya. Then later on it is shown that how there is a golden deer and Sita is attracted towards that golden deer. And when she is attracted, she is wanting to have that golden deer especially the golden deer skin. She feels as if this is a very beautiful gift that I would take back for my mother-in-laws and I would like to give them as a gift. So this is what the other test paper starts of getting attracted. So it is said that then finally one day the Ravan comes and takes away Sita from Ram, kidnaps her 
and she is in that garden of sorrow. She is kept there. But actually it is not that she was immediately kidnapped, but she made five mistakes. That is when Ravan was able to kidnap her. The first test paper that came in front of her was the golden deer. So the attraction. And whom did she say that I want this deer? It was Ram only whom she said I want this. Ram tried to explain to her this is some or the other sort of Maya. Be cautious. There cannot be a golden deer like this in the jungles. But she was no. She was like stubborn on it. I want it. So first was attraction. Second was the stubbornness. I want it. That was the second mistake she did. So then Ram goes and he says, okay, I'll get it for you. And then it is said that the deer was after all a demon only. So he took out the voice. He yelled, O Sita, save me. O Lakshman, save me. In the voice of Ram. And the third thing that Sita makes a mistake is she was not able to recognize the voice of Ram. She did not have that power of discrimination. So she lacked that power. So then she is, says to Lakshmana, go for help. He is calling you. So no recognition. She was not able to understand the capacity of Ram. She underestimated the capacity. When Lakshman is trying to tell her, I know the capacity of Ram. He does not need the help of anyone. He is so capable and he, his directions are that I have to look after you. So then Sita started saying some bad words. I know what your intention is. You do not want to help your brother. And so many other things she mentioned. So the tongue was mm, no longer sweet. There was bitterness in her tongue, in her language, in her speech. Fourth mistake. So first was the attraction. Second was the stubbornness. Third was she was not able to recognize the capacity of Ram and the voice of Ram. And the fourth was bitter words that she spoke and made Lakshmana leave that place. Go. You have to go. So finally then he draw the line of Mariadas and he said, okay, I draw this line of code and conduct. You stay within this. Don't ever come out of this because there are so many demons in these jungles. In this jungle. So be careful. And he goes. And then the entry of Ravan comes in. In a disguised form. And he knew that this line which was very powerful. He cannot enter into the line. So he asked Sita to come out and give her some food. The moms. And that is when. First she refuses, but then because he took the form of a sage uh, tapasvi, so he was about to curse her and then he, that is when she came out of the line and she was caught. So five mistakes. So in Brahmin life also sometimes we do mistakes after mistakes and that is when we come under the influence of Ravan. It is our story of Brahmin life. So sometimes we are also attracted to some things. And then whom do we say? I want this. Sometimes we say in our meditation to Baba, Baba, please. I would like to have this thing in my life. This is the only thing that I am fond of. So can you please get me? 
And Baba says, I fulfill the desires of the children also. So that is how he first tries to explain us in the Murlis, do not have desires, do not go after attraction, um, be careful, be cautious, this is Maya. But we don't understand that language. And we again and again ask Baba, please, can I have this? I would like to have this in my uh, Brahmin life. It may speed up my efforts. I may be able to do this, do that, do this. So Baba says, okay. And then afterwards, when Maya uh, tries to give us some thoughts, impure thoughts maybe, when Ram has gone away naturally, we are left alone. So there is some or the other vibrations that is affecting us. So when the vibrations affect us, we think of something in our meditation and we say, oh, it was Baba's touching. It was Baba's touching. Baba gave me this thought. Actually, it is not Baba's touching. We have not understood the capacity of Baba. We have not understood what the voice of Baba is. And it is Maya's voice. And we are, huh? we become uninfluenced. So then, when we do not realize it is not Baba's voice, and we think it is Baba's touching, Baba gave me this touching, Baba gave me this touching, and then what happens? Then, Lakshman. Laksh means the aim. Man means mind. We uh, deviate from the aim of our Brahmin life. The aim that we have kept in my mind, I deviate from that. And when we deviate, sometimes our speech is not according to the maryadas of Brahmin life. And if somebody does not listen to what we are saying, oh, it is Baba's touching, I got this touching in my meditation, add Amrit Vela, this, that, that's the blah, 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 blah. And then if somebody is not listening, what happens? Our speech is changed from the sweetness. Sometimes bitter words are also coming out. Hardly we realize that. So when bitter words come out, that is when the, the aim of the mind is deviated. So, Baba gives us the line of code and conducts. Stay within this. Don't come out of this. But when Ravan takes a disguised form, so when he comes, what happens? Initially say no to anyone, we do not feel like helping someone. But then somebody tells us, oh, being a Brahmin, you don't even have that much of manners to help somebody. So we cross our line of code and conduct to help somebody. Baba has told us in the Murlis, if you, if you want to help somebody, Stay in the line of code and conduct and help. Do not cross your maryadas and help somebody. Because that is going to take you away from Baba forever. And this is why we find many Brahmins, when they leave Baba's hand, it is when they have crossed some maryadas that they are not able to huh, have control on them, no inner stability, and they are taken away by Maya. So five mistakes. It was not one mistake that made her come and uh, Ravan kidnapped her. No, five mistakes, one after the other. And this is why she was kidnapped. And Baba, Baba's children also 
many a times leave Baba's hand because they know that they are committing mistakes after mistakes, but they are afterwards they regret also, but there is no one to help them. Because they have moved away from the family so far away that by the time the family realizes and wants to help also, but they are in the land of sorrow. They have reached there in the garden of sorrow of Ravan. So then it is difficult for them to come back. Right? So most of the things that are shown in Ramayana are the various test papers that we have to go through. Then there are test papers of jealousy, there are test papers of uh, various other things, uh, uh, what we say assumptions and many other test papers are shown. And those who's, who are able to overcome all those test papers, like the test paper which came in front of Hanuman. Why is Hanuman given this name? Hanuman. Hanuman means the one who has conquered assumptions, doubts uh, from the mind. One who has conquered, who is victorious. And this is when sometimes one after the other, when the test papers come, there are so many assumptions. And we get trapped in our own assumptions also. And then we have many doubts for some other Brahman. It was because we try because we are not able to take the blame on our own self. So we find someone to put the blame on to. And that is when we find somebody, oh, it was because of this person, it was because of this person, it was because we, we, we try to hide our weakness. And then we are not able to come out of it. This is how we land up somewhere far, far away in the kingdom of Ravan. So Baba says, always be careful. Remember Baba alone. He is the Ram who is always there by your side. Do not let go of him and you will find that you will enjoy your Brahmin life. But if we are trapped in one of the other test papers, then one after the other the mistakes are going to come up in our life. And this is where we will go away from Baba very easily. So Ramayana is a story of Brahmins. Brahmin life. But Mahabharat and Gita is the wisdom that is given during the times of crisis. Wisdom is essential. If, I'm, I, if I start moving away from Ram and I do not have the wisdom also, what will happen? I'll be totally trapped. So Baba says, even if you move away a little bit from Ram, still do not leave the study. No matter you may have some, uh, maybe uh, not good behavior with some or the other Brahmins. And when we get upset with any Brahmins, we stop coming into class. We stop the study. Baba says, don't leave that. Even if you have some difference of opinion with one or the other Brahmins, still you have to study. Because the more you get wisdom, it will be easy for you to overcome that course. But if you leave study, what will happen? Those Brahmins who were like kidnapped by Ravan because they stopped studying also. They let go of Baba's hand and then they let go of the study also. So ultimately where are they going to land up? Because in this present time, when there is so much of crisis, so much of upheavals, we need strength where we can control our own self. We can maintain a balance in our own life. So Bhagavad Gita, the wisdom is 
for our internal stage <laughs> so that we are able to balance our internal stage we are able to create that stability and maturity and after that we are able to move on with great patience and cautiousness so that is why the wisdom is essential if there is no wisdom also how will we balance our life knowledge is light knowledge is might knowledge is the light that will show my path even when there is darkness that i feel and knowledge is might means knowledge is the power when i am i'm able to digest that knowledge i will generate the power within me and with the help of that power definitely my connection with baba would be strong enough i can not be taken away by ravan again that was a lesson okay which had to come i needed that lesson because if i don't have the experience of that lesson also maybe in the future i won't be able to cross a similar test that may come up in my life so the wisdom because if i have wisdom but no experience i have all the knowledge but no experience that knowledge will just remain here it won't give me the strength so it is only when there are test papers that come maybe i fail once twice but if i continue to hold on to the study i get the experience and these experiences are going to be very valuable for me in the future times so one is knowledge the second is experience like in today's world people when they whenever they look for a job what are they asked do you have experience you have good amount of degrees means you have the knowledge but sorry we cannot give you this position without experience so they want a person who has experience so yesterday when i showed the four pillars of brahmin life one is knowledge purity and huh, faith and experience because without experience we cannot excel in our life we cannot move forward so the understanding is there but if i have the experience supposing i fail one or twice because i was not able to apply that wisdom in the right way so i got that experience that experience was essential because after getting that experience now i know what uh, was the mistake i did in applying that knowledge into practical life so we all move in our life we always excel in our life on the basis of the experiences not on the basis of knowledge so in brahmin life when there are these test papers we sometimes pass when we have applied it accurately in small small things but there are times when we fail also that's why baba says it's a boxing sometimes maya will also punch you and when maya punches me i get an experience which which point of the knowledge or wisdom i have not used it accurately which are those words of wisdom that baba has given in the murli that i was not able to apply at that time that is why i met with a failure whenever situations come 
We fail because we are not able to apply the right wisdom at the right time. That's why I fail. But whenever I apply the right wisdom at the right time, I'm able to pass those tests. So if I fail, I get an experience because I reflect which was the wisdom that I lacked in ap application. So now I understood. So again, when such a test paper come, I know what to apply. So I've become experienced. So in Brahmin life also, these experiences are essential. So failure is never a failure until you stop doing it, stop making efforts. Many a times it is seen, Brahmins, they stop making effort, they give up. Oh, this is not my cup of tea. Let me go back into the world. Why? Because we were not able to apply. And so we gave up. That is why Baba says, either you are rewarded or you repent. Then in the end, what will happen? Either I get the reward or either I'll have to repent. When the uh, time comes and I realize what mistakes I have made, how I left Baba's hand just because of a small thing, when I stopped studying, I stopped that information or the, I stopped that wisdom entering my, my intellect, my intellect will never be wise enough. And then one after the other, I'm going to commit many mistakes. And in the end, I'll have to repent only. So failure is never a failure until I stop trying. Failures are there. We have to accept it. That's why Baba says, when he shares his experience, Brahma Baba, that when I sit down to eat my food, I think today each and every bite I have to take in Baba's remembrance. But then what happens? One or two bites he takes in Baba's remembrance and then the mind wanders away. He also shares his experience. What he has gone through and he has mentioned it, all the test papers, because I am the engine, all the test papers come to me first. But because he had that much of wisdom, when to apply which wisdom? So he was successful. But the test papers came in front of Brahma Baba also. It is not that the test papers are coming in front of our, um, us only and it did not come in front of the dadis or it did not come in front of the seniors or it did not come in front of Brahma Baba. Everyone had to go through this. This is a part of Brahmin life. It is not that we are only going through. The only benefit that we have is we have some seniors whom we are able to see, we are able to take directions from and who help us in handling our lives easily. But in front of Brahma Baba, there was no one, no example. In front of the Dadis, only Brahma Baba and Mama were the examples. But there were certain things they had to cross themselves because Baba was not with them at that time physically. So not that every now and then every bit they had to ask Baba. No. They started applying the wisdom. And the various wisdoms that we have received, I should know when to apply which wisdom? Like being soul conscious. Where should I apply that wisdom? Anybody? Then Baba says, be soul conscious. Now this week, Baba's murlis are on soul conscious. 
be soul conscious. Consider yourself a soul and remember me. When it comes to the efforts and my interaction with other Brahmin souls or worldly souls, Baba says develop this habit, instill this habit of considering the self as soul, seeing others also as soul brothers, children of one. So this is where the wisdom of soul consciousness has to be applied. Like supposing you are in a family, Lockheed family. There also everybody are not Baba's children. So we can apply that wisdom of being soul conscious and in the relationship also, let us be soul conscious. We see them also as souls and then we serve them, we interact with them and feel the difference. So that is where the knowledge of soul consciousness has to be applied. Where is the knowledge of Baba's companionship to be applied? Where is the wisdom? Where should the wisdom of Baba's companionship to be applied? Because then only we are going to get experiences. You apply in your Lockheed family, see everyone as soul, consider yourself also as soul. The moment you come into body consciousness, my, my brother, my father, my sister, my mother, that feeling of my will sometimes trap you. But if you are soul conscious and you serve them with that soul conscious stage, you be with them in that soul, they will feel so light that they will never put any obstacles in front of you. They would always give you permission. Go ahead. It's okay. I'm good. I'm okay. You go ahead. Because they feel that comfort from our soul conscious stage. I mentioned yesterday also, when we were seeing the chapter of Gita, the second chapter of Gita, that when sometimes, when you are soul conscious in your office, maybe wherever you are working, and you might have heard these comments from many of your colleagues. They tell you, you know, when, you, when we work with you, we feel so comfortable. There is no stress that we experience. But when we have to work with somebody else, we are never comfortable with them. Have you ever heard this comment for you? Why? Because though those people are in body consciousness, so, when they radiate negativity, body conscious vibrations, people are never comfortable. But when we are soul conscious and we allow those seven qualities of the soul to just radiate and let them also feel those vibrations, they also feel comfortable with us. So, this is where soul consciousness, this wisdom has to be applied. And you may see whenever you go into an atmosphere which is very heavy in somebody's house maybe, some uncle's or aunt's house and they had a, a very hot discussion and the atmosphere is very hot, very heavy. And you go there and you just sit there in silence for some moments and allow your soul conscious vibrations to just spread and radiate. In a few moments only you'll feel the whole atmosphere changing. So at your workplace, in your family, in your soul consciousness has to be applied there. But where is the companionship of Shiv Baba? Being with Baba, where has that to be applied? Whenever you are alone and you have some fear or whenever there is a difficult task that you want to accomplish and you feel nervous, 
देर बाबा से यूज मी दैट द वन विथ थाउजेंड आर्म्स इज विथ मी आई एम नॉट अ लोन एंड यू सी द फियर गॉन इट वैनिशेज एंड नॉट ओनली दैट इट वैनिशेज बट वेन वी आर एज इफ कंबाइंड विथ बाबा the companionship is there and with that confidence that baba is with me and we talk in an interview or in anywhere in any place where there is fear then we find that that confidence lays a great impact on the other people and sometimes you find you succeed there is success you that you receive so whenever there is a feeling of being lonely nobody by your side and there is a fear nervousness use the wisdom of baba's companionship baba is with me and you think you can see how things start turning around and you know a baba is helping me baba's energy is working you can see the magic happening you can see the magic happening now similarly the knowledge of drama where is that to be applied where is the knowledge of the wisdom of drama to be applied and this is where the mistake is being made when we have to be soul conscious we take baba baba ba and then the relationship and the family member what are you doing the whole day baba baba nothing else that's a wrong place wrong application right and then when we are nervous we try to be soul conscious it is not going to help you are not that powerful yet so instead of taking baba's help at that time i try to be soul conscious and i want to resolve that whole situation with my power which is not going to work you can't see magic working so the right application of the various uh, points of wisdom that has to be understood very clearly similarly the knowledge of drama then do we have to apply that and this is the place where we make a mistake mostly we take it for granted okay whatever is drama whatever is there in drama and i accept that before doing something before making efforts also i accept the result okay whatever is in drama that will happen why should i use it's using drama at the wrong place and you are going to fail in that situation and then may accept i knew it this was the drama that's wrong complete application is wrong you know so this applications have to be understood very well then only at every moment you are able to receive the benefit of it you can see the wonders of magic working so where do i where do i use this uh, this term drama this wisdom of drama baba always says drama is like a shield and shield is always to protect yourself in a in a war on one hand in one hand they have the sword and in the other hand they used to have a shield the shield was the protection of the self and the sword was for using similarly the knowledge of drama that baba has given me is the shield to protect my stage from upheavals from fluctuating that is where i need to apply drama 
But many of the times, what do Brahmins do? They try to give the shield to somebody else. You hold this shield. Means, whenever something happens in somebody's life, and supposing a person is walking and he slipped his foot and he fractures. And then we say, oh, there must be some benefit in this drama. I'm trying to give that shield to that person. And I am without the shield, what will happen to me? I'll be attacked. Maybe that person is not in knowledge and I'm trying to say, look, this is what we are taught in our spiritual study. That whatever happens, happens for the benefit. So there is some benefit in this. Accept that. Now that person who has no ABC of knowledge, what will he do? Throw away that shield. Is this your knowledge? You have no compassion for us? Huh? No mercy for anyone? What are you talking? Do you understand what you are talking? And that is when, instead of Doing service of that person, there is no service. They will never listen. They will always have this impact. These people do not have compassion for anyone. They feel as if whatever is happening, instead of having compassion, I have broken my foot. Instead of taking me to a doctor, he tells me if there is some benefit in it. <laughs> Wrong application. That's not going to do service. It is going to take people away from me. Right? But at that moment, when I understand drama accurately, full of compassion, I help that person. And first serve him with full heart, with full huh? Baba's vibrations. And fill that vibrations in that service also. And that person would realize we have so much of compassion. Then we can give him the knowledge of drama that there is some benefit. We may not understand the significance now, but let time unfold. Gradually we give the knowledge. But not that when he is hurt, he is in pain, and then we tell him drama, this is beneficial. No, he won't be able to absorb. And you can then never ever relate knowledge to that person. He will never listen to you. He will always have that opinion in his mind. These people are without any compassion. So the knowledge of drama is for myself. To protect my stage. So whenever things happen in my life, I have to use this wisdom of drama. Drama is beneficial. Make the mind silent instead of generating negative thoughts. Why this happened? What this happened? Huh? We heard in the song in the morning, no why, no I. Huh? And then only you can see wah drama wah. If you are going to put why and I there, Nowhere you will be able to say Vaha Drama Vaha. It was a wonderful song. I like the song. I like to have the lyrics of those songs. So, the application of drama is not for others, it is for my stage. Whenever we go through upheavals, whenever we have to face so many test papers, blows of Maya, one after the other, Instead of fluctuating, calm down, realize drama is beneficial. Whatever is coming up in my life, I have to learn some valuable lessons from drama at this time and create my stage on the basis of it. Is It is going to be helpful. We cannot preach drama to anybody who does not have knowledge. It is for my stage. Whenever anything happens to me, do I panic? Do I generate negative thoughts? Or do I maintain patience and stability, maturity? Just see the difference in yourself. If you panic, start blaming others, 
that means you have failed no application of drama there va drama va baba has given us the, each and every scene is va va but if i know how to apply it so stop blaming others drama is perfect when it is perfect uh, who has made drama the most perfect one. in the world also those who are perfectionist those who are perfection they want everything here this should be here this should be here this should be everything stick can span in their life a perfectionist huh? so baba is a perfectionist and if a perfectionist has made this drama it is the most perfect drama when there is where there is no mistake because who has created it the most perfectionist and he cannot create anything which is imperfect is each and every creation is perfect the only thing is because i have certain accounts that is why i had to settle that account in order to make my drama perfect again come on the track again so i need to settle that that's it and as the moment i settle it then again drama is going to be wah wah we we'll see that every scene will be wah wah but the moment i cannot accept drama as it is and i start putting blames on people this person did this this why did he have to say this why did he had to do this and all that all that is jumbling up and that time we find we fail in our lives we cannot sing this song of wah drama wah wah my fortune wah never it is difficult for us to accept drama and each and every scenes of drama as beneficial that shows the immaturity that still i have regarding the wisdom i have not used that wisdom so although i have been in knowledge for so many years but because of the immaturity which i have not used knowledge at the right time so after so many years also i fluctuate a lot whenever things come up in my life and you find some new brahmins they console you take it easy everything is going to be fine take and still we are we are panicking inside that shows that i have been in knowledge for so many years but i have never applied that knowledge in my life so baba says it is number wise someone may be recently but they have applied knowledge at the right times and they become more mature than the older ones they start going ahead and the older ones remain because they are not applying or getting the experiences of the knowledge that they should have which is the very powerful foundation of experience that is why knowledge has not to be kept here it has to be applied it has to be applied have it control so similarly applying the brakes drama is applying the brakes to all the waste when there is so much of waste going on negative apply the brakes put a full point and that is why baba often says apply three points soul i am a soul a point baba the point and drama the point three points so immediately it should stop it is not that i have applied the point here and after one hour or two hours of generating all the waste and negative then i am able to calm down my mind and apply the point no it are breaks breaks have to be applied immediately 
otherwise it is going to create an accident isn't it similarly the eight powers where do i need to apply the eight powers baba has gifted us gifted us with all the powers but if i do not know when to apply which power like many a times baba has mentioned this that at the time we have to apply the mm, tolerance we should know when to be tolerant and when we should have to face the mistake we do is when we have to be tolerant we face and when we really need to face we tolerate so we don't enjoy so our whole life is getting jumbled up because we do not know the application at the right time okay anybody can tell me when to tolerate and when to face when do we have to tolerate and when do we have to face anybody on the basis of your experiences you have applied and you have got a result yes yes when do you have to forgive you tolerate and forgive okay when do we face hmm we have to tolerate people and we have to face situations circumstances challenges baba says we should never face people when somebody is arguing maybe is saying so much bad words close your ears and close your mouth tolerate he will speak for some time and go away but what a mistake do we do when people are doing something we start facing them oh he had told me two words i'm going to say four words now this is the mistake that we do so whenever there are people if they are saying something ignore them be quiet send good vibrations that is the best way to tolerate and overcome it and whenever there are situations circumstances we have to face that we cannot tolerate in situations but this is the mistake that we do most of the time we tolerate situations i am helpless i cannot do anything i cannot do this i how can i do this no we do not have to be helpless in situations we have to face the situation with baba's companionship baba is with me why should i be helpless when baba is with you even if a person is trying to create a situation in your life then also don't face the person face the situation with baba's help with baba's companionship and you will be victorious don't be helpless and try to tolerate because people are going to laugh at you and say now where is the wisdom gone they were trying to give us so much of knowledge what is happening to them so tolerate people if they have said something ignore them it is their understanding their level of maturity that they are speaking what is our level of maturity what is our level of understanding so do not face them it is as if you are facing a person who doesn't have brains and you will use your energy completely you will be drained of that energy completely so tolerate people 
But if that person is trying to create a situation, then you have to face the situation, not that person. And overcome it with Baba's help. And you will see wonders. You will become a victorious soul. Similarly, power of decision making and power of discriminating, discerning. We have to have this power, Satara, when to cooperate, when to huh, give cooperation, and when to withdraw yourself. Both the powers are there power of withdrawal, power of cooperation. But when to cooperate and when to withdraw, that is the balance that I need to have in my life. That will give me experiences. So the eight powers I have, but I'm jumbling with those powers in my life. And so I get no experience. Otherwise, each and everything that Baba has given, each and every treasure that Baba has given us is so powerful. It's a very powerful tool where we can protect our stage, we can protect the whole atmosphere, we can protect huh, people also and they, let them also learn from those experiences and where we can be victorious. Each and everything is so powerfully given to us. But because I do not know and I am not able to apply them at the right time, that is when things are getting complicated in my life. We complicate ourselves only because of the wrong application. That gives us the experience. Sometimes it gives us the realization, but sometimes we are so adamant we do not want to accept. I have done a wrong application. Right? And so we confront. We have to fight. Similarly, the law of action, a very powerful law. The law of action has to be understood very well and to be applied. Many a times people have this question in Brahmin life also. How do I come to know whether I'm settling my accounts or whether I'm creating my... This is the biggest question which many Brahmins have. When am I creating my accounts? Whenever, when am I settling my accounts? So, when do I create my accounts and when I settle my accounts? In Brahmin life, when we are settling accounts, even though if somebody does something wrong or says something wrong to us, we are able to forgive them. And the more easily you are able to forgive them means you have settled your account. Forgive. But sometimes those who are not able to forgive and they start doing something again, that means they are creating their accounts. They are creating their accounts. So we have to understand when we are settling the accounts, we will feel light, we will be able to forgive, we are able to let go, we are able to accept, it becomes easy. But where I cannot forgive, where I cannot let go, where I cannot accept, that means now a bondage is being created. And it is going to make me feel heavy. So when I create, I feel heavy. When I settle, I feel light. Supposing you have borrowed 500 peso from someone and you give it, you feel light. Oh, I've settled my account now with this person. Hmm. You feel light.
Even if he says two or three words, it doesn't matter. Let it be. Let it be. We clear that account. But if I'm trying to snatch, that is creating account which is going to make me feel heavy. The other person will also be heavy. So that is where the law of action has to be understood. And that is why Baba says you don't have to create more accounts. It is better to settle the accounts and relieve yourself completely than to create more accounts and hmm, then it becomes difficult for us to move. Settle it over. Feel light. When we are not able to settle it, then there are so many problems. So many problems. So settle it, finish it. So each lesson that Baba has given in form of the course has to be rightly understood where to be applied. We have listened to the course, we may be giving courses to others, but still if I have not applied it in my life, I have no experiences. And then when people come up to you and ask you a question, what do we have to do in certain situation? What do we have to do? And you say, I've never got this experience, you know. Try it out yourself. Or we may give some wrong instructions. Or we may be so confused, oh, I never thought about because I didn't go through all this. Baba says, in the end, some souls will come to you just for, can you share your experience? We take that from the experience. Because they do not have that much of power that they can connect themselves to Baba, the highest authority, the supreme authority. Their capacity is just to connect to you. So they will come running to you. What should we do in this case? And you also dishearten them. Where will they go? Where will they go? Doesn't it? So we have to be really. And that is why I said all these points has to be trialed in our life. Tried and tested in our lives. Now and then. Every day we are also going through so many things, but we hardly realize. We listen to the murli and then during the day we forget. So we don't apply. That's why no experience. No experiment, no experience. Now we are university students. Isn't it? One is School students, Path Shala, what Baba says. Where are you? Are you in a Path Shala? Are you in a college? Or are you in a university? Where are you? Are you sure? Everyone? Don't count the years. As I said, some are still in Path Shala only. They have failed many a times. And therefore, Baba says, Baba's Murli is for all the three in one class. There are some who are Patshala students, school students. There are some who are college students. And there are some who are university students only in one class. But each one takes what is for them from that Murli. And is able to elevate, go up, go ahead move forward in their lives. School, who are in school yet? Who are in school? In school there are so many subjects that we have to study. Maths and history and geography and science and so many things, isn't it? So when we come to Baba, 
There are also so many subjects we have to study. The history and geography of the world, the mathematics of karma, the science of meditation, and the questions of those who are in the school. When they don't understand, they keep on asking questions. Huh? Like some people are finding problems with science, you know, they don't have a scientific mind. So when they have problems with science, they always keep on asking. So here also there are some students who have problems in science and they don't understand. So every time they'll say, can you show us how can we have easy yoga with Baba? You know, when I sit in yoga, I sometimes fall asleep. I can't have that. I don't enjoy. So how do we have easy yoga? They are finding problems with science, you know, the science of meditation. They are not able to understand. And sometimes it is difficult for some. Everybody is not equally uh, in all the subjects. There are some who find difficulty in science. There are some people who find difficulty in maths. Which karma will give us what fruit? Which karma is going to give us uh, what experience? All these karma related questions. And there are some who find difficulty in understanding history. And their questions are, why 5,000 years? <laughs> Again after 5,000 years, I'm going to go through all this. I can't accept 5,000. You know, this 5,000 years sometimes creates so much of, that is history. So Baba says, if you don't feel like let go that subject. <laughs> Don't try to smash your heads in that. Let it go. Move ahead. Wherever you are perfect, go ahead with that. But some people find it really boring. History really boring, you know. So similarly, when they, there is this 5,000 years, so many religions, so many this, that, all this history and some people feel, why does Baba tell us all this history? But it, it is part of school. This is a subject of a school. It has to be understood because in the future times, maybe this history is going to help you there. It has to be understood. You have to pass that subject of history. If you cannot pass that subject, maybe in the future times it will be very difficult for you to understand so many things. Geography, uh, the geography of this world drama has to be understood. Hmm? So these where the teaching troubles are still there, that is school. Then when we go into college, and we have passed all this and we are faithful. Now Baba's knowledge, I understood it 100%. I understand why the cycle is 5,000 years. I understand what the science of meditation, I understand karma, all this are clear. Then I go to college. And in college, the subjects are less. So we also have only four subjects. In college, Knowledge, Yoga, Dharma and Seva. These are the subjects of the college. And now our questions change. Now our questions are, how can we have a balance between knowledge and yoga? How can we have balance between knowledge or Seva and yoga? We try to do yoga and Seva is gone. We try to do seva and no, no yoga. So how can we have a balance? So now our questions change. And we are trying to strike a balance between all the four. And when we are able to do that naturally, then we pass all the tests and still we are able to strike the balance. That becomes easy for us. The balance between logic and alokic, 
the balance between dharana and seva the balance between uh, yoga and seva it's it's becoming easy now even while doing seva i am able to maintain that stage of yoga i am able to maintain that silence and i am able to do it then i pass the college and when we pass the college then we enter the university and university is just one subject which we have to master we have to do a research and we have to write thesis this is university in in, in university we cannot waste time in schools you have lot of time to waste in college also you have time to go for parties and this and that you have a lot of time to waste but in a university you don't have time to waste you cannot afford to waste your time but it's a research you know what i have been listening in the school and college now a research is taking place and in that research we have to see where my mastery is where my speciality is and i have to master that subject i have to take honors in that in that baba many times in the murlis baba has mentioned about boli dadi have you heard in the murlis she never went into the classroom but she was so perfect and she looked after the kitchen so well she used to satisfy everyone baba said she is also one of the eight beads that was what baba was worshiping her so the speciality that i am gifted with or blessed with i have to master that and i have to give the happiness of it to so many i have to be the embodiment of it this and i have to research at all levels which are the levels we have to do research at the level of the thoughts vibrations what my thoughts are going to create vibrations i have to huh, do a research there on the words what i speak how is it going to lay an impact on the lives of people i have to do a research on my actions is it the same type of actions that i'm i was doing in ignorant times what baba said in today's murli you have to check the chart did anyone get sorrow from me the whole day how was my day today was it a research i have constantly have to pay attention to myself on my each and every karma it is laying an impact on so many minds on so many souls people are watching you whether in the logic or in the logic they are watching you they are trying to take inspiration they are seeing the change in you so a research student cannot afford to waste time on small trifle matters but we are constantly busy at various levels doing the research and then only i will get the certificate three certificates from everyone the certificate of contentment from the self the certificate of contentment from others 
whether they are logics or alokics, and the certificate of contentment from Baba. So it is only in the university that you get this pass with honors. In a school, you give exam, you are not given the certificate pass with honors. Only in the university, pass with honors. Because I'm utilizing each time, each moment, each, each breath in a worthwhile way. Each second in a worthwhile way. Hmm? Everything in a worthwhile way. That is university. When I have no time to sit and gossip with people, because I'm constantly aware I have so much to do. Just one year and in that one year I have to finish my syllabus and I have to do a lot of research. So they can't sit with people and gossip. They don't have time. But in school and college. So if we still have this habit of gossiping, where are we? Are we university students? Or are we college and school students? Huh? School definitely. Yeah, Baba tries to motivate us. That's why he says, you are all university students. And we feel so happy. But if I understand what Baba is trying to tell me, to caution me, I will understand that. Yes, I have to be a university student. Where we have so much of treasures after the research that we are able to share those treasures with everyone and motivate them as well. Motivate them as well. Right? And then when we master that subject, we are able to give happiness on the basis of that speciality that Baba has blessed me with to each and every soul. They are contended with me. Like we see the three dadis. Mostly all of you have seen the three dadis. How many of you have seen all the three dadis? Right. Mostly fifty percent. So, Dadi Prakashmani, what speciality does she have? Love, love. And when she would come in the class, she would just say, "Embrace everyone, hmm? the love." And on the basis of that love, she would, everyone is okay. You want any salvation? We miss this, really, we miss this. Everyone has got everything. If you need any salvation, come up to Dadi. Hmm? Just imagine an administrative head of the organization. She has time for you and say, if you want any salvation, come to me. Normally people, CEOs, they don't have time for anyone. They're so caught up in their meetings and so many discussions. And administration, and they don't have time. But a chief administrative head of the organization telling you, if you want any salvation, come to Dadi and Dadi will give you. She has time for everyone. That was the love she had. And she mastered that love. And on the basis of that love, she got all the three certificates. From God, from everyone, and from, she was contented with herself. The other two daddies, Dadi Gulzar, her speciality was silence. Even if Dadi would not say a word, she would just come to class, give drishti, and fulfills everyone. That was her speciality. 
and she mastered that speciality she achieved that stage of perfection on the basis of that dadi achieved the stage of perfection on the basis of love she achieved the stage of perfection on the basis of silence dadi was also bap saman Kulzardari was also Bab Saman. We cannot say they were less. We cannot say, oh, this is number one, two, three. No. Amongst the three Dadis, there is no one, two, three. They are all equal. To Brahma Baba, Bab Saman. Hmm. They mastered that quality. Kulzardari never had the thought, okay, let me be like Dadi. prakash mani and she would go and start embracing everyone and come no she would not look good in that she would not look good in that outfit maybe isn't it she was best in her outfit of silence and each and every word that she spoke was of value that touched our hearts he also became bab saman on that value she mastered that speciality and dadi janki a uh, jewels of knowledge she was like nobody anybody coming to me should not go empty handed they should be given something they should be given something and then the doctors used to say dadi you don't have to speak you have to remain silent rest you cannot meet people and what would dadi say how can it be possible how can i not meet baba's children they have come so far and dadi janki used to, i cannot be like prakash mani dadi She never thought, "Let me become like Gulzar Dadi. Go there and sit in silence. People will think that is not okay." Hasn't <laughs> it? She was beautiful in her way, in her speciality. When she was in that outfit of her speciality, she was so beautiful. She was so beautiful. And when the doctor said, "No, don't speak. You have to rest." then anybody who would come to me i should give them something at least some blessing and this is when the blessing cards were introduced by dadi janki because the doctor said no you have to if you want to give give them this card and the card is also so appropriate that is given by her it sometimes gives us direction used to give us direction what we have to do next efforts where we have to be even she did not speak but the card spoke so much and she achieved perfection on the basis of knowledge so love silence and knowledge three specialities and their specialities enable them to reach that stage of perfection Yeah. so it it is said in the path of devotion whichever way you take you have to reach there only whichever path you take either take the path of love either take the path of silence either take the path of knowledge you have to reach that stage of perfection only and all the roads lead you there only mamma had the speciality of maturity the knowledge that she digested in her life to that extent the maturity and that is why that was the path that was taken by her all the dadis had their own specialities they never compared themselves with others and everyone attained that stage of perfection and we find 
that these three dadis on the path of devotion also and bhakti also, from copper age, they had their own disciples. Love means devotion. So the path of devotion was created by the Kashmani Dadi in copper age. It went on. It created a path of devotion where hundreds and thousands followed that path. And Gulzar Dadi created the path of silence. Till today also there are so many, so many sages, so many saints who observe silence. They don't speak. Hundreds and thousands adopted this path of silence. And Janki Dadi, the path of knowledge, sharing knowledge. And there are so many motivational speakers in today's world speaking on different topics, different subjects. Hundreds and thousands of people trying to uh, even um, make the knowledge of the scriptures understand in a different way. They are all her followers. She had created the path of satsang. All the people in the world, you find that this course is going on. Huh? Story of true Narayan, story of immortality, story of sharing different stories of the scriptures. Giving knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. And in the modern world, we find motivational speakers. They are all following her path. They feel we want to give to the world. They all have this vibrations. So from Copper Age, they created paths on which hundreds and thousands followed. That was their ability to attain the stage of perfection. They were university students. They never talked waste with anyone. They didn't have time for that. They valued every breath and time. Every moment of their life. They were university students. So where are we? Philippines? Huh? School, college, or university? Huh? All university students, huh? So, congratulations to all of you for being university students. Very nice. So, any questions? We started from Ramayana, then Mahabharata, and the application of Gita, and the application connecting it to our our knowledge. Yes. So, um, why do you say in the chapters about the Gita? Why do you say in chapters for um, Arjuna to become attached and? But Baba always says that the word is Gita. What is it in the Gita? Yeah. That, uh, what are the teachings there? Like the soul and the body um, and the The applications, which I was talking about. Yeah. The applications. In Gita, Bhagavad Gita, second chapter is soul. Fourth chapter is supreme soul. Sixth chapter is Raj Yoga, meditation. Eighth chapter is the cycle and karma is explained in all. So Bhagavad Gita has this full course in it. But afterwards, after the tenth chapter, the realization begins. And when the realization begins, that means the application of this various Wisdoms of knowledge that he was given, where to apply what? 
So it is mentioned in the later chapters 15, 16, 17, 18, this last four chapters. Fifteen chapter is the tree, the genealogical tree that is explained, which is nowhere in any other scriptures. Only in Bhagavad Gita you get the explanation of the genealogical tree. And then from the 16th chapter, 16, 17, 18, it is the, sta perfect, uh, the perfection stage of Brahmins. Where they are, we can see very clearly where are we. In each and every aspect, whether it is karma, whether it is dharna, whether it is service, whether it is donation, whether it is eating, food habits, whether everything, it is shown three stages, Sato Pradhan, Rajo Pradhan and Tamo Pradhan. It gives like a mirror to all the Brahmins, where are we? Are we in the Sato Pradhan stage? Are we on the basis of the experiences? You can easily find out where you are. So 16, 17 and 18 chapters is like a mirror. Are we in the Rajo Pradhan stage? Are we in, still in the Tamo stage or are we in the Sato stage? So the initial chapters are of the knowledge, the understanding which Baba is giving us, course and after that the study. And then Baba, Avyakta Murlis are the different principles that are explained, the depth of knowledge and how that has to be applied. And then Baba talks about where are we, Sato, Raju or Tamo. You have to see yourself. Nobody is going to, this university is such a unique university where you know the final question. What is the final question going to be? Well, we all know the final question. What is the final question? The last paper would be, everyone? Huh? Attachment? No. No. The last paper would be from your own weakness. Some people have conquered attachment. For them, it won't be from attachment. Whichever your weakness is, Baba has mentioned this. Even if you think today it is a small, mis a small weakness, but in the end moment, it will become magnified. It will come in, in front of you in the magnified form. And that will be the last paper for you. And the question, the, question, the, uh, the time that is allotted to answer that question, one second. So we know the last question. That is why we have to work upon our weaknesses. And we can eliminate that weakness from our life by the speciality that we are blessed with. It is only the speciality that can help me overcome that weakness. Baba has already given you the magic wand in your hands. He has blessed you with that, with that speciality and it is only that speciality when I use it in the right manner every time at my thought level, at my speech level, in my relationships, in my connections, in my service, in my dhan, various levels that I said we have to experiment it. So when I do that, I eliminate that weakness forever. So this is the magic wand. The speciality that you are blessed with. After becoming Baba's child, what is the special? We have to find out. We have to discover. What is that speciality that I am blessed with? That will eliminate that weakness. Because if that weakness which you consider it to be very small and I will be able to overcome it by the time, by the final moments, forget it. Because in the final moments it is going to come in the big magnified form where it may make you fail if you are not able to answer that question in a second. And in a second means 
whenever that test paper comes, what do I have to do in a second? How do I answer it? Be bodiless. So if I have that practice of becoming soul conscious, and during my meditation, if I practice being bodiless, which Baba every time in the Avyakta Murli, he, can, he tells us to do a drill, one second, going to that stage of bodiless stage. He's making us, he's preparing us to answer that final question. So I have to increase this practice in bodiless. It's just one moment that is going to come to you. And in that final moment, if I know the answer, the answer also I know, I know the question, I know the answer. I know the time allotted. This is the only university in the world where you know everything and still some fail. So the time allotted will be just a second. And we know how to, to answer that question. And whether we are pass or fail, there is no one else. Baba is not going to give you the certificate you are pass or you have failed. I myself will be the examiner to give the marks whether I've failed or I've passed. I am the examiner. And the moment I will fail and have this thought, oh my gosh, I failed. You have given the marks. You have given the marks to yourself. You have failed. It will just be pass or fail. That will determine your status in golden age or silver age. So you are the examiners. You know the question. You know the answer. You know the time. You know the method of answering that question. And you are the examiner. You are the one who is going to give you whether you have passed or failed. Immediately the moment I will have this thought. Hence, Baba, I've passed. I've passed. Means I've given that label, pass. And then we go to Taram Rajpuri, salute and go ahead. But the moment you have this thought, I've failed. And in the end, the conscious should never ever say wrong. It would always give you the right decision. Pass or fail. So the moment you'll have this thought, my gosh, I failed. Bas gives you the label, fail. You have to go to Dharam Rajpuri and that is where you need to settle your accounts. Then. Wherever you have failed. <coughs> Nothing is done by Baba. It's me only. So this is a unique university. And you, even if you think, in the end, I'll give myself, even if I fail, I'm going to say I'm past. No, you won't be able to do that. You won't be able to do that. That is drama then. That will be drama. So this is a wonderful university. Huh? That you know everything and still if you have to fail, what do we have to say? Only 900,000 will pass. The rest are all going to come behind. So, any other question? Yes? Okay, it's a we follow the man for the right people. Yeah. Face situation. So we we shouldn't face people. Yeah. So if a peop, if a person is trying to create a situation, definitely we face that situation, not that person. Have good wishes for the person that he doesn't complicate the situation, but face the situation. 
how to face the situation we have to use any any whichever the rules are whichever the laws that we have understood the different laws which we have studied either the law of karma or the law of drama or the law of soul consciousness or the law we can use any of the uh, any of the laws which are appropriate at that time to face the situation you can take baba's companionship to face and overcome sometimes there is just a need of soul consciousness that's all it's a simple thing you just be soul conscious allow the seven qualities the vibrations the power of the seven qualities to flow and things will be all right anything else yes so that's why baba has said maintain a balance between a child and a master as a master i give my decision but then be a child and leave it on to baba you know what it is what is perfect leave it i don't have to use my ways thoughts for that okay okay any other question yes is there is any difference yeah. yes there is because in life we are still experimenting and in the university we are like writing the thesis on the basis of those experiences we are like able to come in that stage where we are able to offer on the basis of our experiences um, whatever people could come up to us and say we need some some advice for this we are in a position to give them yes okay om shanti om shanti please give me two hours